a little bit about room service. Every place I go, I, uh, I order breakfast. And now today, I got to go down, downstairs and get it. Yeah, I heard feedback back there. And what happened, what, what happened normally, though, is what I do is I order room service so that I can get dressed and all that kind of stuff and come down to an event like this. And what happens to me is I always order the same thing. I order oatmeal. I order um, uh, fruit. I get toast, whole wheat toast that's dry, and a glass of water. What happens is they'll bring up my, my meal, and they'll forget the toast. Now, what happens if they forget my toast? Do what? What'd you say? Do what? I got a, ah, I got a call. I got a call. Somebody's got to make more toast and paddle themselves up the elevator or stairs or whatever and bring it to my room, right? Right? Sometimes I'll bring me, uh, sometimes I don't order oatmeal, um, but when I do, I for sweetener, I always get Splenda. Okay? Sometimes they forget the Splenda, even though I might say it a couple times, right? It's gotten so bad, I carry Splenda with me, okay? Now, now, what happens is, is sometimes I, they don't have oatmeal, so I order Cheerios and Splenda. And they'll bring up milk, but sometimes they bring up milk in a, in a carton. Sometimes they bring it up in a pitcher. Sometimes they put it in a glass with cellophane over the top of it. Now, which is right? Which is right? Because there's a different cost for each one, yes or yes. If they just throw the cardboard carton of milk on there, that's the cheapest cost. If they got the pitcher or the tumbler, it's a higher cost because then they got to clean it, yes? With the glass, there's breakage probably over time. So then they got to go get more, more of those. Now, I ordered oatmeal one day, and here's what they sent me. What's wrong with that picture? What's wrong with the tray? Huh? Yeah, the other stuff is out of the picture. But yeah, you're right in there. I didn't include them in the picture. But how am I going to eat my oatmeal with a fork? Everybody see that? So this doesn't matter if it's a Holiday Inn, uh, La Quinta, uh, Hilton, or Hyatt. doesn't matter. They all mess up. Now, how many rooms do you think is in this place? But a few, give me a number. 100? Okay. And if they were doing uh, room service here, let's say 30% of the folks is ordering breakfast. Okay? And a high, high percentage is messed up. I'll tell you, for me, it's over 50% of my orders are messed up. Yeah? So if there's 100 rooms here and 30% are getting breakfast, that's, that's 30 rooms, and let's say half, which is conservative, 15 rooms are having a mistake on their tray, on their tray. Now, how many La Quintas are there in the state of Texas? Hundreds, right? How many in the United States? Thousands. And then across the world, okay? And they're all doing the same thing and messing up, and messing up. Now, that's in these big multi-million dollar businesses. What do you think is happening in your little business? Messing up. Messing up, right? You see, you've got you to have systems in your company to remove the chaos. You've got to have systems implemented. To, and chaos, when I say the word chaos, I want you to think about those big checks that you dreamed of when you got into this business shrinking because chaos erodes your bottom line. Just like that person that had to paddle up the stairs to bring me my toast, there's a cost involved. Yes? Either they didn't make the toast the first time or they left it on the counter. It was too cold and somebody <laughs> threw it away, so they had to make it a second time. Right? And somebody had to pay them to come up and down the stairs or the elevator, right? Right. So let's say for you, let's say you go out to a property that you just bought today, you just closed on it today, and you're going to go out and put a lockbox on it and maybe some stuff and take some pictures, maybe some stuff inside, put some signs in the yard. You drive out to the property 
and you do all those other things, you open the trunk and you forgot the signs. That ever happen? You're laughing because it happens all the time, right? Every now and then, right? Happens every now and then. That's no different than them forgetting my toast or my, my spoon. And on that spoon, sometimes they bring me a big spoon, which you would think you would have for oatmeal, and sometimes they bring me a skinny spoon, a little spoon, okay? Which is right. Because you not only have getting the right things on the tray, but you also have to have decisions being made, just like on that milk. Is it a carton or a, or a glass or a, or a metal pitcher? Because each one has a different customer satisfaction level. Yes? If you're in a high price place, maybe the carton isn't good enough. Maybe they expect the, the pitcher, the silver pitcher. You know, whereas in a lower price place, it's okay. A silver pitcher would be overkill, all right? Most entrepreneurs, that's you, are so busy growing their business, they don't take time to create systems. And inherent in all new businesses is chaos. 90% of all new businesses fail. Now, on that, uh, what, uh, what I believe is the number one reason that businesses fail is lack of money. And I'm going to teach that today, too. Is that all right? Teach private lending? The other reason they fail is because they haven't implemented systems in their company. I'm going to do that this morning. Does that work for everybody? Okay. So, uh, this is a little bit about myself. This is my daughter, Brittany, and Brittany graduated from college here a year or so ago and got her master's degree. And she's now a, a, a professor at a local college. And she, uh, she got married, got a dog, got a husband, got a new house here this past year. So she's a, she's a happy kid. And this is my boy, Mark. He didn't care about college at all, but he wanted to march in a parade. He liked marching. He marched, marched in a band. He, was a, he did that in high school and loved it. And uh, uh, he got in college, decided to go, and the... Uh, uh, the very first year, they marched in the Rose Bowl Parade. And this dad got to go, too. So I got to watch my kid march in the Rose Bowl Parade. And that's a picture I took of him there. So uh, uh, great kid, and uh, we're hoping he goes ahead and graduates sometime. <laughs> that's my daughter, Wendy. Wendy uh, had a great year, too. She got her Ph.D. and got a new job. She's now the director of nursing at a major university. And that's her husband, John. And this is their son, my grandson, J.C., and as you can see, I'm training him to be a successful real estate investor. <laughs> Let's talk about you. You've got a multi multiple, uh, multitude of things to take care of, such as finding new lenders, selling property, locating home buyers, purchasing new property, orchestrating contractors, rehab, advertising, renters, payrolls, utilities, insurance, paying mortgages, interest payments, keeping lenders happy, collecting rent, office bills, paperwork, paperwork, and more paperwork, and a whole <laughs> lot more. All of those items that I just, makes you tired just reading that, right? All those items right there create chaos in your business. And many times it's because the business owners haven't created systems. You see, other real estate instructors don't talk about this because it's the ugly side of the business. My goal is to show you how to transform your real estate business so it runs better by removing chaos from your business. What I noticed about my real estate business over the past 20 years, I've been in this 20 years, as I grew my business, I created more systems for myself, and I couldn't see the end in sight. I knew I could make good money in real estate, but clearly I didn't know how to do it without killing myself. I knew I had to make some changes, or it was simply going to burn, burn me out. The problem was, as my business started to grow, I began to feel the stress of additional work, running after different deals, massive paperwork, and phone calls. I even gave up golf. Didn't want to give up golf, but I had to free up some time if I was going to grow this business. But even that didn't help. You know, I didn't get into real estate to give up to things that I loved. Shouldn't it be just the opposite? Yes? And now you, you, you got into real estate not to make your life busier, you know, or more work for yourself. You, you made it uh, so you get big checks. In other words, with every small improvement to your bottom line, there comes a mountain of new paperwork, phone calls, emails. Every time you buy a property, you got more work, yes? Yes. Yeah. I began an intensive study of some of the world's most successful business people. I attended more than a dozen high-priced conferences and boot camps. I enrolled in the $10,000 a year <coughs> business coaching program by the legendary business consultant Michael Gerber. Why did I uh, hire them? Well, because I saw a critical need in my business 
to remove chaos and to set up systems. Just like I did on those five other multi-million dollar programs in corporate America, every one of those bore fruit. Every one of those were life-changing to the people that were in those companies. Here's what Michael Gerber wrote. thought I'd share it with you. So now what do you do? Now that the fire is burning, burning, now that you want to get started, now that you want to turn your business into a little money machine, a turnkey operation, a small business owner's must take the first step. You must step back from your business as it is today and decide what it must look like when you finally got it just the way you want it. And then determine the gap between where you are and where you need to be in order to make your dream a reality. That gap will tell you exactly what needs to be done to create the business of your dreams. And what you'll discover when you look at your business is that gap is always created by the absence of systems, the absence of a proprietary way of doing business that successfully differentiate your business from everyone else. And remember, when you hear something, you forget it. When you see something, you remember it. But not until you actually do something do you understand it. The goal for you and for me teaching today, and what Michael Gerber taught everyone, is you need to work on your business, not in your business. And I'll bet you every single one of you is spending 99% of your time working in your business, answering phone calls and running to closings and things like that and you aren't working on your business, things I'm going to show you today, like having policies and procedures and checklists and things like that. It's this very principle that allowed Ray Kroc to duplicate his success at one McDonald's hamburger stand and then create a multi-billion dollar franchise with stores spanning the globe. I spent five years and $114,730 because I attended other boot camps other than that coaching program. And I emerged with an amazingly efficient business, real estate business system. Early on in my career, I just flew by the seat of, seat of my pants, making things up as I went along. However, one of the key insights I learned from Michael Gerber was the importance of creating systems for everything in your business, a way of doing things that you follow to the letter, almost without exception. The hassle I had once taken for granted were dramatically reduced. I found myself working fewer hours and spending more time with my family. I literally created systems and a checklist to follow for every single aspect of my business. Everybody hear that? Create a che I have 19 checklists in my business. All the way from filing paperwork to making big deals. What it's done for, for me is I show up for an hour Monday and have a meeting. I show up Wednesday and sign checks for that week. And then a few, few cell phone calls and that's it. How many folks like to run their business like that? Would that work for you? Imagine how many more deals you could do, how much more money you'd make, and if you could free up an extra 10 or 12 hours, and I, I, I freed up a lot more than that, but you free up another 10 or 12 hours a week. Today I have more time available to me because I remove chaos from my business. And you can do the same by just learning a few simple things that I've done. It's not about hiring employees. That's not what I'm up here talking about. Uh, in fact, they can make it worse. If you don't have systems, then what are they going to implement? They're, yeah, their system, it, and it, it'll probably be chaos because they don't have the vision of what you want to do with the company, and they don't have the training of what you want to do with the company, right? So they can come on in, and they can really, really mess, mess you up. How many people in here in the next five years want to have employees? Let me see a show of hands. Okay, in the back few, right? Handful. So the rest of you are all going to run it yourself, which is great. What I'm teaching you works for everybody, whether you're just doing it yourself or whether you're, you're going to hire people in. Whatever, whatever way you want to go works. In fact, taking that approach will create additional problems for you because if they create chaos in your business, then you've got to go clean it up when they're gone. It goes deeper. It's about the, about the vision of creating systems in your company and a structure and having the right organization, a business plan. It's a vision to replicate yourself on everything that you do. Small businesses can remove chaos, and the, as the company grows, these systems are critical so that employees can mimic the owner and not create their own system. System implementation removes chaos. System implementation removes the chaos, right? It's just like the example I gave you on going out to a house and not having the signs in your trunk. If you had a checklist on what to do when you close on a property, there's going to be a line item on there that says take the signs, and therefore you'll read that before you go, throw the signs in the trunk, and when you get there, you won't, have, you won't have to do all that running around we talked about. You know, today, you might be driven to work your business 24-7, but there's going to come a day when you're going to want some freedom from the day-to-day -day operations of your business, and, that, and you need to be prepared for that. 
So what's your situation? Is your real estate business running you ragged? Are you overwhelmed with phone calls? Buried in paperwork, constantly running to too many meetings and torn in too many directions? Are you starting to burn out? Now, if you're new in here, how many beginners do I have? You know, you haven't felt that yet. You're excited and, and, and tuned in to what do I need to do. But some of the folks in here that have been in this business for a number of years, they might be to this point to where they're starting to burn out a little bit. Imagine how much more relaxed you'd feel if you could radically reduce the number of meetings and phone calls you have to participate in. And how about the opportunity to spend less time working and more time with your family and friends and doing other things you love? In short, imagine yourself in control of your real estate business with things running smoothly and profitably, even when you're gone for weeks at a time. How many folks like to have their business run if you're even gone for, for a while? Imagine how great you feel and how much more you'd get done and how much more fun you'd have, and thereby freeing you up from the headaches and aggravation of holding you down like a ball and chain. i got a passion for this topic. When I was in corporate America, they, they picked me as the leader on five multi-million dollar programs for a real reason, because they, a, they knew I'd get the job done. The other thing, too, is I have a, ma a passion for, for positive change. And so um, I found that a lot of investor questions r center around running how to run a real estate business. But what I've seen is an incredible need for all real estate investors to get this information. Here's my agenda for today. You don't have to write it down. I'm, this is the flow, though. I'm going to talk about where I started from. I'm going to talk about the management decisions that I made along the way. And then we'll get into office management. What I do in the office, and I'll show you little systems in there that we use, um, my buying system, my fixing system, my selling system. So I'll share that with you. I bought my first property July 7, 1995. Once you get past the first one, they all get easier after that. Before your first purchase, though, Try to get a solid, solid education. I began my company as a DBA, doing business as. It was BMW Properties. You think it's a car. It's actually my kids' initials, Brittany, Mark, and Wendy. Okay, so uh, I chose to become a C-Corp because I wanted to retain the earnings within the company, and right now i got nine entities, different entities. Uh, Start out, it was just me, and what happened was I wanted to get those... Uh, repetitive phone calls like how many when somebody calls in on a rental how many bedrooms does it have and you know and all that kind of stuff and how, how do I see it I wanted to get that off of me so and the paperwork and so I, I hired someone I hired a business a, a assistant uh, but before that uh, when I had an office uh, I, I brought people into my home and so I'd bring them in on Thursday night and Saturday morning so I made sure that uh, my possessions were still in my home when they left and so I remember one day when uh, one of the girls came in and she was bruised up from the handcuffs she had on her the night before. <coughs> she was tossed up against a cruiser. So kind of gives you an indication of, of who I was working with. And then I got an office and uh, uh, put somebody in there for about 20 hours a week. And then I hired a seller, someone to sell property for me, somebody to field all those phone calls I talked about. So that was the flow. And then I hired what was called a liaison engineer. Now, what's that? Well, my exit strategy is rent to own or land contract. And so I'm working to get these people cashed out. And so I thought the mortgage broker would be excited about all my, all, I was going to say something earlier about putting your phones on stun and I forgot, my fault. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, just put your phone on stun. I had to put mine on stun a little bit ago. Um, and so what happened was I thought my mortgage lawyer would be excited about my properties, so many properties and tenant buyers. And they were so busy, they didn't have time to babysit my, my people that wanted to buy homes. And so I thought the people put, putting in the homes, they'd be all lathered up and excited because they were going to buy the home, but they didn't have the wherewithal on how to buy it. They didn't know the ropes. And um, they had been renters before, and they just kind of uh, stayed in that, in that mode. In that. So what I wanted to do was hire a person that would play like a ping pong ball, if you would, or a water carrier between the mortgage broker and my tenant buyers. And it was a mortgage liaison is the, the title that I gave it. And every time she cashed out on a property, I gave her a, a $1,000. Now, I had trouble with the first one, so I just went ahead and married her. <laughs> and then I had, I had to go get another one, okay, because she didn't want to do it anymore. Um, and then I hired a buyer. And you don't think you can hire a buyer in this business because you've got all this knowledge. But what happened to me was I had systems. 
And I thought, my, my, I could bring in somebody to run my systems and buy property, and I had so much private money I couldn't spend it all. How many folks like to have so much money you couldn't spend it all? Would that work for you? So what I did was, I, I, this guy that had only bought two personal residences before, two personal residences before, he bought a side-by-side -side double, lived in one half, and then finally moved out to the ranch house that he's in now. And he did, didn't have nearly the education that you got in, in real estate. And what happened was he got let go from his job after 24 and a half years. And I knew about it. And so um, I, uh, uh, I wanted to see if he, I wanted to hire him. This thing went dead. Yeah. So did you put new batteries in it? Okay. Um, and so what happened was I hired this guy, and from mid-September to Christmas, he bought 24 properties for me. Or 23 properties. How many folks like to have somebody buy a bunch of properties for you? That work for you? Let's talk about my management decisions here. I began with developing policies and procedures, um, checklists, and reports. So those are my chaos elimination tools. Uh, on the policy and procedures, I created 128 policies and procedures for my company. The policies are clear and undeniable in case of employee difficulties or, or to help you um, as you don't do something every, very often. Let's say you do something once a year and you've got to refer back, refer back to it. Now, I'm telling you right now, you don't want to create one policy and procedure because it's work. Is that true? Yeah. yeah, you'd rather be out buying property, right, or selling property. Well, what happened to me is I didn't want to do it either. So what I did was I hired a girl that used to work for me in corporate America to do it for me. And what she did was she uh, um, uh, got married, got pregnant, and didn't want to do it anymore. She just wanted to be a mom. So, so I, got, I had to take all the, these procedures back that I was creating. So then what happened was I hired a guy by the name of Mike, Michael. And Michael's one of these guys that are, that are that's real anal which is good for what I had him doing. But the other side of it is he, he was a good starter and a bad finisher. You ever meet people like that? So he was, took off, and then he just faded on me, all right? So I, I pulled the work from him, and then I hired Lois, and I bought her a, uh, a desk and a computer, and uh, I put her, I put her in, my, in my office, and she uh, 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 was great. And she plowed through most of these and got, a, got a virtually done, and she, had, she got sick, and she had, to, she had to quit. So who do you think ended up doing it? Me. I ended up doing it. And uh, once you get them done, you'll find that, that they are hugely powerful for you on how, how to run your business. You actually, it's, you actually detailed everything in your business in those. I created 19 checklists. These are the backbone of what you do. These are the uh, ones that are going to save you time and effort on a day-to-day -day, on a day-to-day -day operation because you pick up your checklist when you're going to buy a property you pick up a checklist when you're going to sell a property you pick up a checklist when you're going to evict somebody and you just walk right right through it time